Yes, row, row after midnight. Ram, I'm like, oh my God, it's Christmas already. Well, no, it's December 15th, oh, the middle of the month. Yay, we're doing this. Welcome to row, row after midnight, another episode. Today's the first day that I am celebrating the Christmas with my outfit, little decor, hello, Bo. Oh, that's my Bo. Mm. <laughs> anyway. My show is on Mondays through Fridays, 9 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Central, and midnight Eastern. You can follow me on Facebook. You could type in www.facebook.com slash tenor, or you can go to my YouTube channel, just type in Filipino tenor, or you can go to your laptop and type www.youtube.com slash Filipino tenor. Subscribe, please. I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Roro the Tenor. And if you are so kind, because, you know, this whole thing, it's like, if you want more stuff on the wall, <laughs> show your support via Venmo at Roro the Tenor. Um, so hopefully, you know, it's Christmas. It's all about giving. All right. Talk about giving. <laughs> Not really giving, but stay safe, get vaccinated, and keep wearing masks everywhere. Now to our amazing guest tonight uh i'd like to introduce you our guest before i bring her in just so you know she it's a she she has performed nationally and abroad in both opera and musical theater most recently she was the italian opera diva carlotta carlotta Giudicelli in the phantom of the opera national tour for over 1000 years wait 1000 performances throughout the US and Canada, as well as, as well as Donna Anna, Pamina, Violetta, Susanna, and Musetta. She was also awarded Miss California in 2006 and placed in the top 10 of, there she is, Miss America, in 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, <laughs> I'm kidding. Without further ado, let's bring in Miss Jacqueline Fontaine. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a, wait, I was like, wait a second, what? There she is. Wait, we have a diva in the house. Diva. We're having some technical difficulties here. It's like, what's going on? I just hope that the connection is good. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? You've been laughing. I can see you like laughing throughout the like the backstage. It was like <laughs> I can I only have you ever introduce me. I oh. ever. <laughs> Thank you. So just so you know, our 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 theme for today is Queen of Hearts. Oh. We are Queen of Hearts because you know, I believe that Jackie is one of those queen of hearts. You know, she's got a great heart and she's a beauty queen. Ah. <laughs> it's that simple. Just so you know, you can see it's like that's her info. Jacqueline Fontaine, singer, actor, and voiceover actor. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have the, this ticker here the whole time we are having this show. But before we talk about what we're supposed to talk about tonight, we always start with what do we always start with? Jackie, welcome to Joke of the Day. You better work. There's a lot of fans here. A lot of fans right here next to me. All right, Joke of the Day. And guess what? The cool thing about this Joke of the Day, like every day right now, is it is a spit take. So we ask our guests to take a sip, keep the liquid in your mouth, and when you are, when I'm done with the joke, then you can ingest it. Hopefully, not spit it, but spitting would be great. All right, are you ready for the joke of the day? All right. My yoga instructor was drunk today. Put me in a very awkward position. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Yes, that was an oh, almost. <laughs> 
<laughs> almost a step. And we like that. Thank you for joining us in Joke of the Day. You like that? <laughs> Thank you. I consulted with one of my friends, my best friends in Chicago, Rebecca Cam. It's like, <laughs> which one? Because you have to match the joke to the right person. That's because true. Because like, which one do they would think? It's like, hmm, you you base it on like their their uh, routines. It's like, you know, you look like someone who would do yoga, right? Oh, that I, I, I do. Uh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome, I think awesome. About you. Thank you. Well, I dad jokes. I love dad jokes. So, awesome. so uh, we've had we've had uh uh Jacqueline here before with two other people, but this time uh we get to have her as a solo guest and uh the very first the, the beginning of the show always starts with getting to know you. So we're going to ask you, um, you know, tell us about yourself, where you're, you know, the simple things, where you were born and raised, you know, uh, your family, where you went to school and where you live now. I was born and raised in Oxnard, California. Yes. More than just a pretty name. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Cal Lutheran University for my undergrad and USC for my grad, uh, let's see, my master's degree, two years of the doctorate. Um, my family, my father's from Chile, from Santiago, Chile, and he still has his Spanish accent. I have an older sister, and my mom's from Fresno, grew up on a ranch. Well, that's Very why you have, do you have, you do, that's why you have those features. That's, that's why. why. <laughs> awesome. That's so, wait, so you're technically biracial as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, half my God. Half. No, because I've been surrounded, a lot of my guests have been biracial. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's we're awesome. keep That's continuing awesome. with it. Yeah. And where do you live? Where do you live now? Because I know you also travel a lot. And mm -hmm. then, so where do you live now? Where's your base? My base is just outside of DC. I live in Alexandria with my partner. Yay! That was so cool. <laughs> work, girl, work. And awesome. and our dog might make an appearance. We'll see awesome, if he, awesome. He wanders yeah, when, when, is it a she or a he or a, a he. They? He's a ten-year-old <laughs> rescue. Awesome. So if he if he ever uh, comes here, and you know you could always pick him up, and Sean's like, "Here, my dog." <laughs> All right. So the next one is you're <laughs> such a trauma queen. Okay, not just a trauma queen. You're such a trauma queen, diva. Um, so we ask our guests, which is now you, uh, what was your most traumatizing experience as a performer, as a performer traveling or performing in any uh, situation? What what would you consider like the, when I say traumatizing, because a lot of people says it's the worst thing that's ever happened. No, traumatizing is every time you're in that position, like then you think about, oh, I got to make sure that I do this and that. Yes. Yeah. So what would you consider your most traumatizing experience? 100% was when I almost, no, I did miss my entrance. My first entrance for Phantom. <laughs> I had it timed out perfectly because I knew- but exactly where I had to enter onto the stage at the exact moment. And I think we were in, was it Philly? My dressing room was right next to the stage. I lucked out, it was right there. So I just, I hung out in my dressing room. I wandered over to pick up the severed head so I could enter at the right time and I couldn't find it. <laughs> and so I was looking for it and I missed the musical cue. And I'm like, no, I think I'm gonna be okay. And then suddenly, it's because the music builds and builds and builds and then it cuts, it completely stops and I'm yes. supposed to be down center screaming. With your the cadenza. Show, with the cadenza, exactly. Yes. Just me on the stage with the head. And I was still backstage looking for the head. So oh I just God. ran on stage singing the cadenza in a 40 pound gown just from backstage and running all the way down center. No, <laughs> no, this was not, just no, this was not the, the, this was not the first time you stepped on stage. It was no. one of the performances. No, no, this was about four months into the 
the show. And by oh. that time, you, you get this rhythm where you know where your entrances are. You know, we could even turn down the show. I don't recommend it, but you could turn it down and you just knew, okay, it's about time for me to change and go downstairs. But yes. because yeah. my dressing room was right there, like forever more, I think that was like 200 shows in. <laughs> so for the next 800 shows, I was always ready to go with the head standing outside. <laughs> Oh, see, see, that's, that's a, that's a perfect example of it. Kind of like, you know, what, like what I said, it's mm -hmm. like why it's traumatizing is because then every time you do a certain, so, so every time you go on an entrance, regardless, like when you did, when you did uh Bohem in LA be like, yeah, I gotta make sure I do my entrance. No, I, I am like, placed here. I am ready to go. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, you know what? It was, uh, it was, a. Uh, it was now. It's all okay. okay. It's all okay. All right. So the next one is we're going to talk about is mm. what Jacqueline calls yeah. the pivot technique. Uh, tell us about tell me about what you think the pivot technique is as a performer. Uh, because it permeates to everything. Um, after doing a show so many times, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. So it's mm -hmm. literally just learning that the show actually really does just go on. And so you pivot, you run on stage without the head or you just keep going if you've forgotten the lines, you know? Um, so it's it's kind of just rolling with the punches and knowing it's still gonna be okay and people don't really might not notice. Just- True, true. Praise. And then, I mean, speaking of life, life changes desires change talents change and you just gotta listen to that and and you know you follow your heart pivot so you, you, you would you would uh so would you suggest like you know when when opportunity presents itself mm. it's okay to take the chances rather than oh, always stick yeah. to to being you know it's to being too comfortable yeah. it depends on like yeah. How do you want to go through life? Do you want to get more right. adventures or do you want to just be stale? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, especially as performers, like the more life you have, the better of an actor that you are, the better of a performer you are. And and life isn't, you know, very continuous as a performer or a singer, you know, so it's good to have those extra talents. But yeah, no, absolutely. Just uh, pivoting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So the next one is what mm. to keep in mind when embarking in and maneuvering between different mediums. And by mediums, um, we were yeah. talking about like there's opera, there's musical theater, mm -hmm. there's plays, there's mm -hmm. uh, voiceover, there's mm -hmm. uh, TV acting, mm -hmm. and then there's film acting, you know, things like that. What do you, yeah. what do you, uh, for you personally, yeah. what do you keep in mind? That brilliant. And that's perfect lead in from pivoting because it's when you pivot, you have to have a beginner's mindset. So when you're pivoting between the different mediums, you can be at the top of your game in one, even though it still is in the entertainment field or it's still in a similar field, there's a lot to learn. There are a lot of differences. And so, gosh, even when we're at the top of our game, we have to keep that humility and, and beginner's mindset that Listen, there's always something to learn. There will always be something to, to grow from. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and uh, any, um, you know, any, uh, like, I don't know, su not, not suggestions, like advice when it comes to like, you know, like a mindset. When you said mindset, yeah, what to remember, absolutely. like, do you, yeah. do you have uh, any yeah. advice on mindset just to remember like when something yeah. Happens, like hmm, what do you growing, think? growing pains are good okay because that's why they're called growing pains. ah yes so yeah. now the next one is <laughs> opera and musical theater musical <laughs> theater and tv same yeah. but different <laughs> and go through yeah. that so at least we know that you know sometimes oh, we God. may be in one sometimes we may be in one field Mm -hmm. And then we think, oh, it's so different. Oh, it's so different. But there are differences, but there are also, the differences are sometimes similarities. And, you know, talk us through about Very that. true. I mean, coming from opera and having studied it for, you know, as, as long as we did, we learned that you have to be like super prepared when you show mm -hmm. up. For TV auditions, for musical theater auditions, uh, sometimes you get the material like the night before. You we might even have the same day audition. But um, all of the work that you've put in in your technique, 
you kind of uh, you have to trust that you know it. Just like when you go and perform an aria and you sing an aria in an audition, you've been working on that for years. But you trust that you have that technique. Same thing with TV, uh, film, musical theater. Trust that it's there and just tell the story, which is same across the board. So from your experience on, you know, when whether you're doing uh, opera or musical theater or film or commercial, um, yeah. you know, there are people there watching mm -hmm. and, you know, whether they're aud the auditors or judges or yeah. auditioners, um, yeah. what is something that's kind of like a normal thing that you like the kind of not a feedback from them? but the kind of, uh, when you observe them, that's kind of similar on both that you could, you think is, oh yeah, and both expect that they may not talk, but if right, they don't yeah. talk, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. they don't like you, but what if they yeah. don't like you? <laughs> so, so yeah. from your experience. I found in the opera auditions that I did uh, living back in New York, what early, in the early aughts, was mm -hmm. that it was still somewhat formal, somewhat. Uh, mm -hmm. There were the auditions where they would give you feedback and like positive reinforcement, but it was still, you know, you entered with a certain solemnity and you you performed your arias and, and you left with the same grace. Whereas in musical theater, they'll just straight up applaud you at the end of a song if, if they like it, you know, and, and laugh with you and play and they work with you. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. So, and and that, that's, yeah. And and then with um, with TV, what I've seen it can it runs the gamut either from the play and the laughing to the straight just forward okay do it thank you goodbye you still could have booked the job it's oh it can be very right. unnerving so just know like hey you're you going with your confident self just do it and then leave it in the room <laughs> awesome ladies and gentlemen you have been watching I, I've been t telling like friends, like, you know, I'm the only one running this gamut here because, you know, I'm, you know, it's self-produced, self-hosted and whatnot. But um, mm -hmm. so wait, wait, I think, what is that? I think I'm getting something. I think somebody <laughs> wants to, uh, I have some breaking news right now. What's going on? This is the Dollar Report. With Adam Lau at the Metropolitan Opera House, who is singing the jailer in Tosca. One question, does jailer stand for Jennifer Lopez? No. And that was the Dollar Report. Yeah! Thank you, Roro, for that report. Oh, tell Adam I said hello. Oh my god, you know Adam? I know both Adam and Matthew, both both gentlemen singing that role. My heart is like exploding oh, awesome, with awesome, joy for them. Awesome. Oh my god, oh my god, yeah. that's awesome. So um now that we have that after that Dara report, now um now we delve into a different one here. I call it Watch that scene, digging the beauty queen. What's going on? What are we, what are we uh, talking about here? Actually, um, she's gonna, you know, uh, let me see. I'm like sending her some like stuff here. <laughs> but anyway, tell us about um, we when we had you last time. Uh, you shared this, you know, the stage with two other uh, beauty queens, uh, Miss Maine, 2004, and. Yeah. Miss Illinois 2014. And yeah. just tell us about, you know, what's the most important thing to remember uh, regarding, you know, being a, uh, you know, beauty queen, especially in yeah. Miss America? It, specifically to Miss America, they ask you to have uh, a social awareness, a social cause. They call it in the past, they called it a platform. Mm -hmm. And so young women enter, you know, thinking, oh, hey, it's a, a fun talent competition or a beauty competition. But then there is this enormous part of it that not only has to do with your public speaking, but has to do with what are you serving in the community? Mm -hmm. So what I loved about uh, pageant at the local, state, national level is keeping that mentality of how can I serve? And it taught that, that it wasn't just about wearing a shiny hat. It was actually giving back and uh, that's what i loved the most we're, we're visiting all of the local pageants because one person's gonna win
but mm -hmm. you know, between five and 35 women are competing in these locals and they're learning life skills. They're learning how to do an interview. They're learning how to cheer on fellow women when they're all competing for the same job. They're helping out in their community. And I, I just absolutely love that aspect of the, of the pageant. So here's my question. Um, you know, when people are competing, they're so passionate about their platform and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then they win the state. I mean, they, they win the, the, their city. Uh -huh. I don't know what they're called. The <laughs> local. Is the it local. called region? The local. 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 And, and, then after that, and then the state. Mm -hmm. But they have a platform from the local to the state. Yeah. If they don't win the title, how are we so sure that they continue <laughs> the platform? You know what I mean? So that's Is my question. Is there like a five-year follow-up on <laughs> Right. It's like, no, it's like, yeah. how do we, like, yeah. Do, yeah. because that's what, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, are they only doing it for the sake of the pageant? Yeah. Uh, or, no, you do it because of the pageant. But mm -hmm. if you don't advance, yeah. how do you, how, how do you, how much of the people do you know, at least during that time, who kept in touch with the platform that they're doing or, oh, or it's yeah. on the side? I, I mean, I can say the, the woman that I uh, crowned after me got a full-time job working uh, in at a senior center working with Alzheimer's patients, and that mm -hmm. was her platform. Um, I, I personally, my platform before I switched it to diabetes was music education. Mm -hmm. I continue that uh, through all of my work with USC. Mm -hmm. There really isn't a follow up, but it's hopefully sparked something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or at least, or at least, um, uh, it may not be the same platform, but mm -hmm. if they actually follow it up with the same, uh, what is that initiative? Yeah. But in, in a totally different field. In a different thing, but you got that taste of community. You got mm -hmm. that taste of, of something that's bigger than yourself that is so necessary, not only as performers, but also, you know, uh, competing in the pageant of being like, oh, there's there's a whole world outside of this that it doesn't have to do with me. It's actually about serving. What what can you give? You know? Ooh, so here's <laughs> here's some uh, I'm going to throw some shade <laughs> right now. Some shade. We're going to yeah. throw some shade a little. Have you yeah. ever met someone where um, for lack of, for example, someone who's an animal activism you know as a platform animal activism yeah. or like uh, being vegan mm -hmm. and they're so passionate about it and then later on mm -hmm. you you heard oh suddenly they're wearing fur um <laughs> buying cow rugs or like someone suddenly eating it have you ever heard any at all like from hearsay just like oh you don't have to be specific you're like yeah, yeah. i've heard it. it's like no you haven't so i i haven't heard that specifically but i do know of someone that like whose mom like created a 501c <laughs> for them uh oh wow kind of solely just to do the pageant and oh. try to like bend the rules horribly in their favor well <laughs> apparently she didn't win <laughs> <laughs> see yes see that's the that's one it. that's one of not win Hundreds, hundreds awesome, of, hundreds awesome. Of wow, I like about that. Well, <laughs> guess what? We're almost to the end of our show. And um, I'm gonna uh we're gonna showcase our, our guest tonight. He's <laughs> also our musical guest, but before we showcase our um our our you know our ex ex extinguished, our distinguished <laughs> I'm on my way ESL. out. Yes, ESL mom. <laughs> Our distinguished guest, um, we have to have her do the... <sighs> There you go, putting her on the spot. All right, let's see here. What do I have here for... for what do I have here? So we're going to send... Yeah. See, they don't see this in advance. Just so you know, I send it right now. Okay. And um, here is pickup line of the day. Where is okay, that? I'm Where is that? Like, what is it? Where is it? it <laughs> like, oh, oh, wait, there you go. Pickup line of the day, as presented by 
our guest, Jacqueline Fontaine. <laughs> Take it away. You are the reason Santa even has a naughty list. <gasps> oh, God. Perfect. We are. Thank you for that one. Oh my God. That was up. Oh, yep. I'll take you home. I'll take you home. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our. Yes. I, I <laughs> oh, by the way, before I forget. So this is two videos in a row, but I'm going to, I have a surprise for Jack. So you, you did the prima donna, right? Yeah. So she did the prima donna in Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. But how many, how many people know the prima donna's name? Well, let's check it out. Roro here for Roro After Midnight. We're going to ask people around here in Times Square to see if they know who Carlotta Giudicelli is in Phantom of the Opera. Let's go. So you've seen Phantom of the Opera, the musical? Yeah, I did. Do you know who Carlotta Giudicelli is? No. She's the prima donna. That's good. Uh, so uh, you've seen Phantom of the Opera? I have. And do you know who Carlotta Giudicelli is? I do not. Yeah. <laughs> she was the prima donna. Okay. Uh, Carlotta part of the Phantom of the Opera. So you've seen the Phantom of the Opera? I have. And so do you know who Carlotta Giudicelli is? Uh, no. She's the prima donna. <laughs> do you know who Carlotta Giudicelli is? Yeah, she's the prima donna, right? Yeah, somebody recognize her. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Carlotta Giudicelli's there inside your mind. You like that one? Yes, yes. Oh, the diva, yes. I love that. Bless that sweet man who knows this theater. It's like, you know how hard it is to ask pe random people? Oh, a question like, in the camera. Oh my God, especially the, these, this, you know, these days. Oh my God. So that was our, um, our uh, moment there. Now I present to you the stylings of our guest, Jacqueline Fontaine. Thank you. 
Yes, yes, girl, yes. You better visit work. Oh my God. Yes. Oh. <laughs> There's so many. Okay, I, I think it. I'm getting Christmas ones. Christmas ones. The Christmas week, I'll have Christmas ones. I don't know where to get them because I got them in Chicago during market days. Thank you again. Oh my God, that was our special guest, Miss Jacqueline Fontaine. And by the way, you can get more information by going to www.jacquelinefontaine.com and her Instagram is Jacqueline F. Make sure you check it out there. And Twitter is Jacqueline Font. <laughs> There's like two different kinds. And um, again, thank you for joining me tonight. It's always a pleasure. And, uh, mine entirely. Okay. And hopefully our audience will see you again soon. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Diva. Bye. Oh my God. I'll see you soon. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Miss Jacqueline Fontaine. Yes. Isn't Fontaine? I think Fontaine is like, this is a musical that they mentioned Fontaine. Oh, anyway, thank you again for watching Roro After Midnight. Bam! Mondays through Fridays at 9 p.m., 11 p.m., or oh, 9 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Central, and midnight Eastern. Make sure to follow me on Facebook and on YouTube, Facebook uh, at Roro the Tenor, and YouTube at Filipino Tenor, and also on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Roro the Tenor. And if you are generous enough, please send me money. <laughs> okay, send me some nice contributions. Via Venmo at Roro the Tenor. By the way, this shirt I'm wearing right now, see? Roro After Midnight. The back of it. Look at the back of it. Ooh, look at that. Merchandise. Hopefully, I'll be able to, like, supply mer more merchandise if I get more don donations. Contributions from all of you. Again, it's still the pandemic. And, you know, with all the variants, you know, um, stay safe, get vaccinated, and keep wearing masks whenever possible this has been an amazing night so hopefully i will see you again soon oh see you soon bye bye guys